What we're going to be looking at here is preferred stock where it's cumulative and fully participating for dividends. And our example is where Corporation A has the following stock outstanding and retained earnings. Number one, they have preferred stock, 4,000 shares, $100 par value with a 6% dividend rate on the stock here. And common stock, 10,000 shares at a $50 par value. Retained earnings, they have $140,000, all to be paid out in dividends here. And the preferred stock has two years of dividend in arrears that haven't been paid. First off, let's go and let's answer this question here. What is meant by participating in non-participating preferred stock? And we'll look at it from the sp perspective here of the security holder or the uh, holder of this preferred stock. Uh, number one, non-participating, that entitles, uh, you're entitled to no more than the specific fixed dividend rate on the preferred stock. So in this case, we had a 6% uh, fixed dividend rate here. So you, the uh, holder couldn't get no more than that 6% dividend rate. Now looking at partially participating preferred stock, this is where in addition to the specifi specified fixed dividend rate, uh, you participate with the common stockholders in any dividends up to a certain stated rate or amount here. And where you got a fully participating, that's where you're going to share pro rata with the common stockholders for the dividends declared without any limitation here. And for our example, we're going to look at the um, fully participating here, uh, preferred stock. So let's go and look at that here. So uh, preferred here we're going to have the preferred stock is cumulative and fully participating here. So what we mean by cumulative here, it's going to have to pay the dividends in arrears, those two years of dividends that are sitting that haven't been paid. And two, you're going to uh, participate with the common stock uh, shareholders in dividends greater than the dividend rate here of the 6% stated for the preferred stock without limitations here. You're going to share pro rata with the common stockholders here. So let's look at our example here. So first starting with the uh, two years in arrears here and we'll we'll have this broken down here between our preferred uh, sh shares here and our common shares here on the dividends that we're going to allocate here. So first for uh, and, and the preferred stock here has to get paid before the common stock here in these dividends. So looking at our preferred stock here well we have uh, for the um, arrear, uh, pay, uh, inch, uh, dividends in arrears here well we have 4,000 shares outstanding $100 par value times the 6% dividend rate for two years here that's going to equate to $48,000. Now we also have the current year dividend here um, payable on a preferred stock here. That's $4,100 par value times again that 6% dividend rate here for the one year that's $24,000. Okay so we've taken care of our preferred stock here on the dividends here for based on what they have to be allocated based on that uh, dividend rate here. Now this is where we're going to have to come in and we have to figure out this pro rata allocation here between our uh, common stock here and our preferred stock on the remaining dividends that we have to deal with. So first off uh, the common stock here on that pro rata basis they're going to receive here six percent uh, at that at the same dividend rate here. We use this here even though they're not getting paid a 6% uh, rate here on their common shares here, but we use this percentage the same as we did here for the preferred stock. So based on that here, they have 10,000 shares outstanding, $50 par value times 6%. They're going to be allocated $30,000. Okay, so now we've allocated our common stock here that, uh, before our pro rata dividend uh, uh, dividing up the remaining amount here. So what we have allocated here was of 48,000 here, 24,000 both going to the preferred shareholders here, or preferred stock, and 30,000 going to the common stock. So we have a total of 140,000 here that has to be allocated. So the difference is going to give us $38,000 here. And this balance is a dividend here on a pro rata basis. It's We're going to calculate it here to be for the preferred stock at 16,888 and common stock 21,112. And let's go down and look at how we do that. So first, uh, looking at this 38,000, just so you understand, well, that's the additional amount that's available for what they call participation. So we had the total amount here of 140,000 less what we already allocated, 48,000 here for the preferred stock for the uh, dividends and arrears, current dividend here for the preferred stock here at 24,000 for the year, and also 30,000 here to the common stock here 
for 30,000 here. So the difference, 140,000 less what we've already allocated here gives us that $38,000 amount. Now, what we have to do is we're going to base uh, this allocation here and we start with our par, par value of the stock uh, to participate here. So we have our, we have to figure out the par value for both our preferred stock and our common stock. So for our preferred stock, well, we had the 4,000 here shares times $100 par. That's total amount here is $400,000. And for the common stock, 10,000 times the $50 par, 500,000. Now this is the total par value of both of those stocks. So look, we look here as we just uh, add, those, add the total par amounts here to be 900,000. 400,000 here plus 500,000 gives us $900,000. Now we can determine what they call the rate of participation. Knowing what's available here at 38,000 plus the total par value here of 900,000, we're going to come up with a percentage here that for our pro rata allocation. And that's simply taking the 38,000 here, a total amount that has to be allocated remaining to be allocated divided by the $900,000 total par amount here for common stock and preferred stock. And we're going to get here this rate of participation in a percentage form. In this case, it's 4.222% here. Okay, now we can, we're going to be looking at uh, calculating this dividend, allocating this dividend here, and they call it the participating dividend. So for a preferred stock, all we do is we take the uh, rate of participation here, that percentage of 4.222% times its par value here, that we total par value of $400,000. So again, based off the total par value here for the preferred stock plus that rate of participation, the percentage here, we're going to get the allocation here for a preferred stock at $16,888, just as we uh, are shown above here. Now, for the common stock, same thing. You just take your rate of participation, that percentage here, times the total par value for the common stock here of 500000 is going to give us an allocation here of $21,112. So, okay, so we've taken our participating dividend here. We divided it up to preferred stock here at 16888 common stock here at 21112 total up to $38,000. So that's what we had to allocate up here, that $38,000 that was remaining here. We did it on a pro rata basis here based on the par value here and, um, and that rate of participation that we had to do here. And that was allocating this 38000 Now, before we go up and we finish off this discussion here, let's look at another way to compute their participating amount. And this may be a little bit easier to do here. So for a preferred stock, all we do is we take the 400000 remember that was the total par value here, divided by 900000 the total par value for both the common stock and the preferred stock, times that um, 38000 here that we have to allocate remaining to be allocated and that's going to give us uh, the fractional amount here times the 38,000 is going to give us again $16,888 here for the preferred stock then for common stock same thing the total par value of common stock here divided by the total value of both the common stock and the preferred stock here 900,000 that fractional amount again times the amount that we have to allocate here that remaining 38,000 gives us $21,112 so Adding those two amounts together, we get up our total participating amount here at $38,000. Same as we calculated up here, uh, based on that our rate of participation here at 4.22%, that was $38,000. And then you can see up here, that was what we had to allocate to $38,000. Okay, so we've taken care of that here. Just remember here, you have to, you got really two ways of looking at it here. You have to take the par value of the stock that's participating here. Figure the total par value for both your uh, preferred stock here and your common stock. Total those together and that becomes the, this is where you can figure out your fractional amount here for your rate of, or your percentage or rate of participation. Just the uh, what's remaining to be allocated in this case the 38,000 divided by the total par value here of 900,000 gave us that frac uh, that rate of partici rate participation here as as a percentage here and then taking a, the dividend allocating the dividend you just take your rate of participation here as a percentage times the uh, total par value here for each of the stocks for the preferred stock and the common stock that's where you allocate out your uh, di remaining dividend here that total 
38,000. So much went to the preferred stock and then the other amount here gone to the common stock. And okay, so that takes care of our allocating this dividend here on a, what they call a pro rata basis. Okay, so let's just go back up here one more time here. So this is looking at the total a dividend here that would go to your preferred stock. Just sum your amounts here. And so you had the 48,000 here for your uh, arrear payments here, two years, current payment here uh, of dividend payment here of 24,000 plus the pro rate of basis here, 16,888. You come up with the total dividend here to the preferred stock here at $88,888. And then common stock, same thing here, this, that 30,000 here. Now remember this 30,000, that was based on its par value, shares outstanding, and then we use that 6%, um, the same 6% uh, dividend rate here for the preferred stock. And that comes out to $30,000 here, plus the de uh, balance, uh, the dividend on that pro rate of basis, 21112 total amount here of $51,112. So just summing everything across here, you can see that your total dividend you had to you have here in the retained earnings that had to be paid out one hundred and forty thousand dollars, and then you you could total up your amounts here for your preferred stock and your common stock total amounts that comes up to one hundred forty eight forty thousand dollars. So the key here was how we have we allocated um, based on that dividend rate here for both our preferred stock here and our common stock, but then when we got that remaining amount here, that thirty eight thousand dollars, that is what we had to allocate between a preferred stock here and our common stock based on that pro rata basis here. Now remember this example again was fully participating preferred stock here where and then we also had some cumulative uh, dividends that had to be paid in, in arrears here but this uh, um, uh, pro rata basis here was based on the uh, uh, fully part what they call fully participating preferred stock. Okay, so that takes care of uh, calculating our preferred stock here, um, dividends where it's both cumulative and fully participating.